Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. If you're new to the channel, a big warm welcome. My name is Tristan Mortlock, this is Jiv, and this is Captain's Vlog. Now, today's video at the beginning, we're going to be talking about the crew uniform, you know, how it works, how Jiv orders it, how she logs everything. So Jiv, first of all, you are the Chief Stewardess on board. Yes. As some of you may not already know. You are in charge of uniform ordering. Um, so just take us through the steps when a new stewardess comes on board a new boat mm -hmm. and you need to get uniform for the first time. Yes. Just give us a, a walk through the step, the steps of you know what it takes to in order from the ordering process to the embroideries and yeah. choosing the actual uniform. All right. Well, firstly, you're going to find the suppliers. Um, you do want to have minimum suppliers as it can get quite messy if you've got too many people you've got to order with. So we get all of our stuff between three companies really. Um, most of it comes from Marine Broidery in Cannes, which is this stuff. And so that's Cannes <coughs> in the south of France, guys, yeah. so you know, yeah. Um, we're quite fortunate this year because we've got most crew returning. So I've already got all their sizes, their measurements. So even the crew that haven't returned yet, I can already get their uh, uniform organized. So that's really an advantage for this year. Although there is one crew member we don't know yet. So I'm yeah. kind of trying to keep a selection of average sizes that, um, um, that we can have for him. Um, well, each oh. different department requires different things. So for example, the, <clears throat> the deck team, we've got them these rash vests, which are quite nice, so they can be working with the guests, but it's still professional. They, they need to get in the water with the kids, anything like that. So that's actually nice. I think the rest of the crew are a bit envious because everybody wants to be in the rash vests yeah. in the water. <laughs> um, the chef obviously has a completely different uniform, the engineer as well. Uh, for the chef and the engineer, we generally give them a bit darker uniform because um, the white t-shirts don't last very long, all the polos with them. Yeah. Um, then we have a yard uniform, <clears throat> things that you can get dirty. It's generally old uniform from previous seasons. Um, and then we've got this uh, on charter uniform and even off charter. So what we're wearing now, these t-shirts would be um, off charter. And then we've got the polos, a little bit more formal on charter. Um, also kind of summer and winter, so the pants you're wearing now or the trousers you're wearing now are long pants for the winter. You've got the shorts, which are these guys over here, also like a board short material. So we try and find things that are practical. For these the are fast dry as well, right? Yeah, quick dry. Yeah, quick dry. Um, so we find things that are practical for the boat, but also look smart as well, because you don't want, you want crew to be comfortable. Yeah. Uh, we have our night uniform, which is obviously um, less practical in terms of you're not going to be um, doing lines, fenders, washdowns, things like that. That's yeah. more of a formal, formal uh, uniform. Yeah. Um, so how I sort of log it is <coughs> we have these sheets over here. So each crew member has a sheet and it has what, I mean, everything that we allocate to the crew. So it includes the linens, your washing bags, uh, radios, computers, whatever we allocate so at the beginning of the season when the crew arrives. Um, they would sign for it, so when you sign for it, it's your responsibility. If it's broken or damaged or, I mean, within reason, um, if you're being a bit You'll take it, care of it. Yeah, yeah. so it, it kind of allows everybody to be responsible and not just lose things. Um, and we don't have an issue with that. It's just to stay on top of it. And it's good for me to keep the log of uh, how much uniform we have in storage, how much uniform we have here. That is where it gets a bit tricky. It's, mm. it's you know, kind of always keeping track of one jacket might go back and then you've got to make sure you log it, otherwise you land up um, with too much stuff. Right, and then how, how do you know um, whose uniform is whose? So what the labeling process, how does that work? So each crew member is allocated a color as well as um, a number. So we use attach a tag, which is a little gadget like that, super easy to use. And you get these little plastic tags so you can wash them, things like that. Okay. So, so that these, would be... So you guys can see, they're basically, each crew member's allocated a number and a color, right? Yeah. So these are the little numbers. Yeah. You guys can see that, let me just get the focus on that. So those are numbers, they get then, with that special machine, put on um, yeah. different eyes of the clothing. But on the t-shirts, the for example, you, you, you stitch in the color, yeah. right? Um, for the linens also, because these tags get caught on the linens and they can dam damage them when you roll it through the roller iron. So that's why we have a color as well. And then everything that you have, that we have on the boat that's allocated to crew has the number or the color, so it's easy to 
So um, there's no mix-ups. Yeah, there's no like, he stole my t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. So we do get that. I'm sure many other crew can relate. When, um, oh, I put it in the laundry. No, you did not put it in the laundry. <laughs> Organize your cupboard and come back to me. So sometimes it is, but um, yeah, it just helps us to keep track of everything. So yeah. So you're saying when? So basically, when a new crew member comes, a crew member comes on board, they get issued uh, a folder. In that folder is they like Jill was saying they've signed off for their uniform. Yeah. They get everybody gets issued a radio, like mm -hmm. the one I've got here or here, like that. Uh, they get issued linens. Yeah. So you know, so things sets, like um, yeah. double sets of linens. The radios. They also in the folder they have what's called the um, codes of conduct. So basically, all the, po the the onboard policies. Every vessel is different. What else they got in there? Um, safety procedure. Your position in a drill. Okay. So your position. Your your muster. All the muster drill stuff. So the muster list is in there. So every crew member knows their duties, which we 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 drill every month. That what to do in order of, in case it's a fire, in case it's abandoned ship or man overboard, every uh, crew member on board has their duties when that happens. Now, if somebody is unable to do their duty, there's a backup, there's a secondary line of duties as well. Let's say, for example, Jib has been you know, seriously injured and she can't perform her duties in an emergency, then somebody else will take over her duties. So that's quite good, because although we do drills, it is good to have that written um, even with the, the code of conduct as well, mm. you start out the season reading through, it's fresh in your brain. Yeah. But it's good that crew always have access to that stuff if they need to sort of... Just keep refreshing, keep refreshing. Out. They yeah. keep their certificates and things like that. So yeah. that's kind of the administration side of things. Um, yeah, so I give each crew member a copy. So they yeah. generally, um, they would have a copy, I'd, either, I'd photocopy it and then I would keep the original. And then I try and keep a digital version as well so that it's easy for me to... Um, well, keep a log over the years, especially for example, we had Harry in 2018. Yeah. Uh, he hadn't planned to come back. Um, now he's coming back, and it's great because I've got all his sizes, measurements, everything already. So it's all file. logged. All yeah. On so file. I've actually got his stuff ready for him for when he arrives. Perfect. Um, Look at that, already over there, eh? And then we use these boxes in the storage unit, so they've got ventilation. We put nice smelly sheets in it, wash all the clothes. So when the crew, when we put stuff in storage, it smells good and it's ready to. Yeah. So what, what would you say is the most frustrating thing when it comes to the uniform in, in regards to the crew? But I know sometimes you do get a bit frustrated, she does get a bit frustrated sometimes. Um, I would say when things get lost and then it's immediately the laundry. Yeah. But I think now, I mean amongst the crew, it was a thing in the beginning, I think now it's not really like that. It's, it's quite like, okay, you look, I'll look from my side. But our laundry is so small, we can't hoard stuff. You know? yeah. We can't keep stuff. But it's true, sometimes we get things mixed. Because it's so small, we make piles of each uh, cabin or each uh, person. Yeah. And sometimes we mix it up as well. So that, I mean, I think that's quite good. Especially now we're completely familiar with whose is what. I mean, you know, we know everybody's um, socks, underwear, whatever. You just know it. Um, that comes over the years, you yeah. know. <laughs> um, so I think that, I mean, this year is not frustrating at all because it's returning crew. There's seven of eight of us, seven out of eight of us returning. So I know exactly um, what to give everybody, which is great. Yeah. Um, and then also, you also, um, Jib issues all the crew members laundry bags. So you get your colored laundry bags, you get your whites, and then you get your underwear and, and socks. And each of those laundry bags are also tagged and numbered so people can't lose their their things or blame blame laundry when things go missing yeah. right well i think it's for both sides i mean in terms of having your personals washed in a bag rather than having us go through it for, yeah. for both sides it's just it's a nicer way to get that done you know? yeah absolutely anything else to add i think we've pretty much hit the nail on the head i think that's it i know that on larger yachts they have like much more uniforms. Yeah. Um, they Can you imagine the yachts with 70, 80 crew, the uniforms? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I know you, I mean, we have a yard uniform, we have off charter and we have on charter. And even in some cases, they kind of overlap a little bit. Uh, one, because we just don't have the space in our cabins to have too many uniforms. Mm. Um, and two, I mean, we're not big enough of a boat to have more than that, really. Yeah. So. Good size, though. Yeah, the boat. The, the, the number of crew, I think it's good. It's yeah. good. And I can keep it organized and managed, yeah. which is great.
because the more people we have on board, more problems I have. <laughs> people equals problems. <laughs> not all that, no. I'll, I'm not, I'll say I'm joking, I'm not really joking. <laughs> Biggest stress. Cool, great, okay. Um, so guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video and you've learned a thing or two from Jiv of how it works with the, the uniform on board a super yacht. Uh, again, it's constant organization. Jiv loves her spreadsheets. Jiv <laughs> has spreadsheets for spreadsheets. If you like, if you enjoy that video, please, what they got to do, Jivanator? Give it a like. Give it a like. Up. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, what else? They got to subscribe. Share. Boom. Subscribe. Yeah. Comment. Share. There is one thing I'd like to add, and yes. that's something we are changing this season in our effort to go more eco-friendly or sustainable. Um, to be honest, I wish I had done it originally, but again, it's been something we've been developing on Able over the years. So um, as, as much as possible and where possible, um, any uniform we're ordering, like this year we're replacing our t-shirts for sustainable t-shirts. So any of the damaged t-shirts that we would normally replace anyway. Um, so trying to shift over to organic cottons and things like that just to make... Uh, obviously you've got to find the balance because it, we don't want the boss to be paying more because of it. So yeah. you've got to find the balance. Um, but luckily we have great suppliers who are able to um, help us source those Balance it out. Fit within our budget. So, so that's quite a new thing that we're doing which I'm quite happy about. And I, yeah, it will be happening over the next years fantastic cool guys hope you enjoyed the video and finally um if you want to win a week's vacation on board motor yacht awol all expenses paid for check out the link in the description it's all inclusive your flights your food the fuel the tickets start from 15 pounds which is around 20 us dollars follow the instructions it's really simple buy your tickets and you could be the chance of winning a week's vacation on board a luxury super yacht here in the Mediterranean.